Hi everybody, it's Lynn. This is just a little update, and at the end of this I'm going to uh, upload a little tutorial on these glitter beads. And these aren't the prettiest ones. This is some transparent clay, and it actually has transparent glitter on top of it. It was just an experiment. I wanted to see how it turned out. They look actually more pearly than anything. But The best glitters on these glitter beads that are going to give you the most sparkle are either the holographic glitters or some metallic glitters. This pearl glitter is just a clear iridescent glitter. So there's a clear iridescent glitter on a clear <laughs> transparent clay. It actually turned out pretty cool, but it'll have to go on the right project. It looks kind of dull compared to some of the other things. Okay, here is the one that I um, had showed in the previous video that I started. And here it is finished and antiqued. I absolutely adore that one. I just really... The, I'm sorry for the glare for a second. I just want to show you how wonderful that embossing powder turned out. And I did not heat set it first. I baked it all together in the oven. The only thing I did when it came out of the oven was to antique it. And, of course, then to put the jump rings on and the, and the veil up there. So, it really turned out sweet. This one I did the exact same way, if I can pick it up. The tree. And, again, I'm going to glare you for a second just so you can see the smoothness. How wonderful that embossing powder came out. It's beautiful. And then I just made a little homemade... Um, safety pin for a bail on this one and a little pearl copper leaf to go with that one and then this is for Sharon she asked me if I could do a snow owl brooch so I did two and I, she said she liked silver she wore silver colored jewelry instead of I'm so sorry I'm listening to myself even. <laughs> she wears gold colored jewelry and not so much silver. So I made two. I made a silver one with a kind of a marble stone in it. And then this one I really think turned out pretty. And it's kind of a an ivory gold owl with his little I don't know if this is going to be all blurry or, but it's kind of a blue glittered crackled white stone in the middle. So. There you go, Sharon. Let me know what you think. I, I have no problems doing another one. Um, snow owls don't really have the ear tufts sticking out like regular owls do, but if I would have cut him off, he just kept looking too much like a hawk to me, so it was really bothering me. So. If you have any advice, any anything else you'd like to see, let me know because I've no problems doing another one. So, so pin back on both of them. So there you go, Sharon. Like I said, honey, let me know what you think. Get back to me. <laughs> um, I like them okay. They just really weren't what I had pictured in my mind, but. Without going too, you know, I didn't want to make it too glittery or too, I don't know. Let me know what you think. That's the important part. Alright. Like I said, I'll follow this up with that uh, glitter bead. These are just the regular ball beads, so to speak, with the glitter, and it doesn't come off when you're done. So, Alright. See y'all later. Bye now. Hey, really, thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, this is just the first uh, basic, basic, basic tutorial. So, I'll try to step them up a notch. Alright, I'll see y'all back in a bit. Good morning, it's Lynn. I don't know if I'll add this to one of the tutorials or not, but um, basically, I believe this is transparent clay. It's just a chunk I had in my scraps that became disassociated with its, with its label. So I think it's transparent. It is a little difficult to tell because there are uh, 
you know, an ivory and some other transparent colors that look really similar. So I'm going to do a little experiment here. I've made two just round balls very easily. Like you're a kid, just round and round in your hand. And this is the way I do those glitter beads. I'm going to take a Ziploc baggie and put some glitters in here and bounce them around in there. Hold on while I put some glitters in. And this is just a microfine polyflake glitter that I got, I believe, at Michael's last year. And it comes in several different um, iridescences. Iridescences? I'm not sure that's grammatically correct, but anyway. And does it say on here anywhere what color this one is? I'm um, thinking not. There's a violet. I have a violet one, and then... I'm going to be honest and say I don't know what this one is. <laughs> I just put a tiny bit, and I mean just a very little bit, in the bottom of the bag. And I'm going to dump these two balls in there. And normally I would zip it shut. <laughs> Back for tutorial purposes. I'm just going to bounce them around in there really good. And then while they're still in the bag, I'm going to start rolling them a little bit. And what that's going to do is that's going to flatten that glitter. It's going to flatten. And what that's going to do is that's going to flatten that glitter. It's going to flatten it onto the ball and into the clay. So I'll roll them around a little bit and then I'll bounce them again. Roll them around again. <coughs> And yes, it is messy, and you'll get it all over your hands, and, you know, my hubby, fortunately, likes it when I'm glittery. So, now I've taken them out, and again, on my glass, I'm just going to roll them. <coughs> I'm going to start to get really shiny, because the glitter, as it lays flat catches the lot a little bit more. So this really iridescent glitter is very pretty. So, I don't know if you're going to be able to see how smooth, it's literally smooth. There's no glitter sticking up, there's no, you know, little pokey bits. And after you fire it, after you um, bake it, and then put a clear glaze on it, of course, it's on there. There is no glitter coming off. So at this point, I take my big, I have a big uh, hat pin, actually. It's actually probably a corsage pin that I ream my holes with. And I don't know why I have a bead reamer, but I've just used this thing for forever. So. so anyway, that's how I do those, just the plain glitter beads. These are just some accent beads that I use on the charm bracelets and stuff like that, so... That's probably the simplest polymer technique that I know, other than just rolling beads out of colored clay and baking them like that. So, that's the plain glitter bead, and I will come back with a, one of the glitter stones. I've actually been working on a couple for a project, and I'm just not happy with the result yet. So, Although it really did come out pretty, it's just not perfect for what I want it for. And this one hasn't been finished yet, obviously. That's the way it comes right out of the oven, which is which is pretty just like that. So anyway, I'll be back. This is my oven setup. It's just a Hamilton Beach. It's actually a rotisserie convection oven. And I just got it at a you know, yard sale or whatever and the um rotisserie parts missing. So I've got a like a corningware dish with some polyfill in the bottom. And the polyfill works really well to cushion your polymer clay because it doesn't stick. It cushions it really well and you can use it over and over and over. This is just two sheets of wax paper that before I used them, I stuck them in there and let all the wax melt off of them, obviously. And same thing, I have used them 
over and over again. And because my oven doesn't bake um, true on to temperature, I've got a, a, a oven thermometer in there. And before you start, if you're, if you're going to get serious about clay, check your oven temperature because they can vary quite a bit. And I burned a few pieces before I learned that. So...